Hey everybody, Sagan here. I like doing a bit of a rant tonight. Um, something set me off. Got my Stormwind mug. Alliance. Yes, I'm Alliance. <clears throat> I wanted to share some of my collection. And I wanted to rant about some of the fandom regarding this portion of my collection at the same time. And let me preface this by saying I don't think that the Final Fantasy series is bad. I really don't. Some of the Final Fantasy series makes up my favorite games. Um, really, any of them that are divisible by three. Three, six, nine, twelve. My favorite Final Fantasies. Some of my favorite RPGs. But something always winds up coming up whenever I'm critical of Final Fantasies in forums or anywhere, usually Reddit. <laughs> um, and it's that people cannot stand others being critical of Final Fantasy. They've put it on a pedestal where suddenly the series is more important than the opinions of others. And that is strange to me. Uh, they're games. Some of them are good. Some of them I don't care for. Some of them I think are pretty legitimately bad. But uh, most of those are opinions. I would be very hard-pressed to actually factually prove the Final Fantasies, which I believe to be bad, are indeed bad. I just fervently do not like them. Um, but I'm a fan of Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy was my second RPG. I played Dragon Warrior on the NES, and then as soon as my dad finished it, I played Final Fantasy on the NES, which the only reason I had to wait for him to finish it was because one save slot in the original 8-bit version. So I'm going to share my collection of Final Fantasy stuff and um, rant about the problems that I have with each of these games to kind of offset it a little bit. And if I offend you, you're offended, and that sucks, and I'm not sorry. So let's start it off with where it began. We have here Final Fantasy. Now, I haven't actually gone through the trouble of picking up any of the Famicom cards yet, and I'm sad about that. Uh, I haven't gone through the trouble of getting any of the reproduction cards yet, which you can get Final Fantasies 2 and 3, the original Famicom versions, translated on an NES card to play. And a lot of them look really good. Excuse me. This might turn into a long video, so... <clears throat> Gotta stay hydrated with rum. Um, Final Fantasy. Good things. I, for a long, long time, thought that it, you know, went the party system route, whereas Dragon Warrior went the Lone Warrior route. And I didn't realize until much, much later on that, oh, oh, they added a party in two? Oh, they added party customization in three? As far as Dragon Quest is concerned. What Final Fantasy does, and what they continue to do throughout the series, and this is a good thing, is they change things up, they innovate. They're not afraid to get science fiction mingled with high fantasy and magic. And it's a constant thing for them. And in the Final Fantasy world, you're like, oh, okay, swords. Oh, okay, magic. Oh, okay, spaceship. Why not? Let's go to the moon! And it mostly usually feels natural, except for that one point in 4 where they're like, let's go to the moon! Um, Final Fantasy IV even has you going to an ancient civilization castle in the sky, which is essentially this giant floating ship. And you can fight Mecha on there, and God help you if you run into a War Mech on your way to Tiamat. It was terrifying. War Mech was worse than any boss in the game. And... Um, it was science fiction, oddly placed within this fantasy game, and I didn't question it at the time. I don't think anybody did. It just seemed like it fit in. But the problems with the original Final Fantasy are it just hasn't aged well. Um, there's nothing particularly amazing about this game, nothing particularly 
groundbreaking. Um, I would say Nobuo Uematsu has done an amazing job with the score. Um, oh, I can't remember his name. I feel terrible about this. The artist, the artist who is the lead artist for the series through six and has continued doing the art for the covers. Uh, he also did Vampire Hunter D. I cannot remember his name, and that is terrible because he's one of my favorite artists. Monster designs, amazing. As far as the gameplay was concerned, there was nothing really amazing about the gameplay. Just everything fit together really well. Um, Final Fantasy II, which we first got on Final Fantasy Origins for the PlayStation, which also had a remake of Final Fantasy I, superior to the original game, by the way. If you're going to play Final Fantasy I, either play it on this, or play it on the Game Boy Advance, Dawn of Souls, or even play the PSP version. There's hundreds of versions, just if it's your first time playing Final Fantasy I, unless you really want to play it in the original format, you can honestly stay away from this. It has improved. There have been better versions. Two was weird. I'm going to hold it over here because my head's all over the place. Two was strange. They experimented with removing the leveling system, which was odd for RPGs back then. It's still kind of odd now, but you can see some reminiscence of a skill-based strength system in other games. Um, the Elder Scrolls series largely makes use of it. Yeah, there are levels, but you still, like, you can gain in strength separately. You gain in swords separately. And that was in here. There were no levels. You got health point. You raised your maximum health pool by surviving combat, by surviving taking big hits. You got better with swords by using swords. That threw a lot of people off. But if you look at it long enough, it's very easy to cheat this game. Um, big hang-up with this game, the story is terrible. We've seen this story since Akira Kurosawa's The Hidden Fortress, and then again in Star Wars. Why do we need it in Final Fantasy? Really? It's also on Dawn of Souls. I already said that. Dawn of Souls is essentially Final Fantasy Origins. Essentially. There's, there's like little things I could mention, but I don't care to think about them right now. Um, Final Fantasy 3. Originally released on the Famicom. We didn't see an official Western release until the DS version. Um... I played the original Famicom version uh, via emulator and kind of shoddy translation, but it immediately became one of my favorite Final Fantasies because it introduced us to the Final Fantasy job system. And it did it in a really, really good way, and it allowed for a huge amount of party customization that wasn't there before. Uh, I don't actually have much negative to say about this game, except maybe the final dungeon is kind of rough. And by rough, I mean it's like three damned hours long, and there are no save points. And the cloud of darkness at the end, the final boss of the game, is so much harder than anything else you run into the dungeon. Odds are, your first time getting to her, you're going to die, and then you're going to realize that you lost three hours of progress, and you're going to put it down for a while and not come back to it for a bit, which I did too. And I did that on the Famicom, and I did that on the DS. Great game. One of my favorite Final Fantasies. Some have claimed that it is hard. It is not hard. Final Fantasy, as a series, is not hard hard. Dragon Quest, as a series, is not hard. I like Dragon Quest. You know I like Dragon Quest. If you're on my channel, you understand I like Dragon Quest. It's not hard. It's an entry-level RPG. And then you've got medium-level RPGs, which I would say are like Morrowind. Um, and Oblivion, and, and maybe Skyrim. Skyrim is easier than those because it's got that entirely cleaned up quest system. Great game. I'm not saying that it's not a great game, but it's not hard. Uh, moving on past Final Fantasy 1, 2, and 3, the original trilogy, if you want to call it a trilogy. 
I'm going to run out of room for my pile. Uh, we start getting into the Super Famicom years. And sadly, I do not actually have a copy of 4 for the Super Nintendo. I have a copy of 6. haven't found a copy of 4 at a price that I'm willing to pay. It's out there somewhere. And eventually I will have yet another copy of Final Fantasy 4 because it's probably the most remade of every game in the series. So as far as 4 is concerned, I have the Game Boy Advance version. I have the Final Fantasy Chronicles version, which came with Chrono Trigger, which is a much better game. I have the extremely unforgiving Final Fantasy IV for the DS. Uh, and if I had to pick the hardest game out of the Final Fantasy series, I would say Final Fantasy IV for the DS is. This game is freaking ruthless, and if you are just used to the standard JRPGs like Pokemon and Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts, this game is going to chew you up and spit you out. You need to reach into your medium-level RPGs to work out strategies to killing these bosses, because the bosses in this game were designed to be beaten in a very specific way. Honestly, this is not my favorite version of the game. Uh, I would have to say that my favorite version of the game is on Chronicles, because the Chronicles edition is the original Japanese difficulty. Um, some of you may or may not be aware of this, but when Final Fantasy IV got localized, this Final Fantasy II here for the Super Nintendo, it was deemed too hard. This is a recurring theme in the history of Japanese to English localizations, is the game is too hard for the English market. Let's dumb it down. They can't handle it. And, um, I don't know. That's cute. Did they play our gold box titles? I don't know. And the PlayStation version that we got with Chronicles is the original Japanese difficulty, and I'd have to say that that's probably my favorite version of 4 if I had to pick one. 4 is not one of my favorite titles. It's okay. There are certain plot points that I really like, like Cecil, you know, spoiler alert. The whole thing with Cecil redeeming himself. Um, and then there are other plot points, which seem to be recurring within a lot of the Final Fantasy universe, like the old bait-and-switch, where the final boss rears his ugly head. When you've reached the villain of the game, you find out, oh, he's not the villain at all. This guy that I've never heard of and have no reason to hate is. Let's kill him instead. Kane is such a back-and-forth character. I love when he's in the party. The Dragoon and Jump ability that comes back throughout Final Fantasy, that's great. Kane was the original Final Fantasy Dragoon. And he's really cool, but his character is so dim. The amount of times he gets brainwashed or tricked by Golbez and then brainwashes or tricks or steals from the rest of the party is ridiculous. And the writing just plays out like a soap opera and not a good soap opera, a really bad soap opera. If you want an example of a good soap opera, uh, I would have to say, I don't know, watch Korean dramas? Certainly not Final Fantasy IV. Telenovelas. There you go. You gotta watch the Spanish language soap operas. Those are amazing. And far more interesting than the story in Final Fantasy IV. Moving on to my usual point of contention. And one of the reasons that I usually piss off the fanboys, Final Fantasy V, first released here in Final Fantasy Anthology. It uses the party system from three, and that's fine. The gameplay is there, and that's fine. The characters are Honestly, okay. I don't have a problem with bots, or Galoof, or Ferris, or Galoof's daughter, who I really don't 
care about. My problem with Final Fantasy V is my usual problem with many Final Fantasy games, and that is the plot. The beginning of the game was amazing. I loved the first portion of Final Fantasy V. I thought it was great. And then, spoilers, shit happens, you lose a main party member, who gets replaced by someone who's completely identical to him, gets all of his gear, all of his abilities, all of his experience points. So it's like he never left in the first place. Which eliminates a lot of the reason that you would kill off a character in an RPG. You want the player to miss them on both an emotional level and a level of strategy. Uh, oh god, man, I really wish I had Eris's healing abilities right now. And that doesn't happen in this. They kill a character for no reason other than to kill a character and replace him with an inferior character who plays the exact same way and fills the same roles that you'd set him up to. That's really my main problem with Five. And the story just dries up about halfway through. I never finished Five. It's one... It's the only Final Fantasy, actually, before Final Fantasy XIII that I have not finished. Anyhow, it's on Chronicles. It's on Chronicles? Anthology, excuse me. Chronicles is the one with four and Chrono Trigger, and that's worth picking up for Chrono Trigger alone. And it's also on the GBA, and it's probably gotten other releases. I don't really care that much. I'm so over Final Fantasy V. Not a fan. But that does bring us to one of my favorite RPGs ever. Swiftly running out of rum. Final Fantasy VI. Do not let this mislead you. It is really Final Fantasy VI. I got the cartridge. I don't have the maps. It's a shame, but I was able to find the instruction book for free, might I add. Six is arguably, and a lot of people agree with me on this, the high point of the series. Um, they managed to push the Super Nintendo to its limits graphically, as well as, for the first time in the series, having a really, really, really good, mature plotline that was just as interesting politically as it was on the individual character level. And there were so many characters. And each of them had their own stories, their own backgrounds, there were hidden characters. Even the, um, the Esper system in Final Fantasy VI, it was an early version of the Materia system. Everything about VI is great. If you have not played Final Fantasy VI, hear me now. You owe it to yourself to play this game. I rank it right up there in my top three RPGs, which I don't know if I've said this before. My top three RPGs, in no order, they're all kind of clumped together. Fantasy Star IV, Dragon Quest VIII, Final Fantasy VI. All of those are must-play RPGs. If you can stomach Japanese RPGs at all, those three are as good as they get. Six. It's amazing. Buy it. Play it. You have to. Please. I am pleading with you. Before you judge anything, Final Fantasy, know the high point, know the bar that was set years ago. This is the game to beat. There's also the Game Boy Advance version. Some people have issues with the Game Boy Advance version. Um, it's got some glitches. It doesn't play exactly like the Super Nintendo one. They made some changes. There are some new espers in here. They made some changes to the translation to make it read better. I've played both. I have no issue with either. 
If you're complaining about the translation on 6, I don't know how much attention you paid to the Super Nintendo version, but apparently you paid way more attention than me. Um, they are both wonderful experiences, in my opinion. It's also on Final Fantasy Anthology, along with 5. Ignore 5. Play 6. 6, 6, 6. Oh, 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 before I stop talking about 6. Bonus Dungeons on the GBA version. Ah! Reason enough, because there's more game there. Alright, so. Man, 20 minutes, and we're only like halfway into the series. I love ranting about video games. I love talking about video games. I love my decent collection. I've seen collections that destroy mine, by the way. Some of you may be like, wow, he's got a lot of games. People walk into my home, and they're like, you need more bookshelves because you have games spilling out into floor space. And yes, I do need more bookshelves. And yeah, I do have more games than the average gamer, but I've seen collections that just destroy mine. I have friends who I can be like, well, do you have this particular rare game? And they just kind of like wander over to a shelf, they check their card catalog, and then they're like, why, here it is. <laughs> I digress. Where am I going to put these? You can go on the floor with the other ones. Oh, and here we are. The Holy Trinity. The Final Fantasy games that most Final Fantasy gamers judge the series against. We'll start with the big one first. I'm sure you know which one I'm talking about. Spiky hair, dude with an abnormally large sword. Final Fantasy VII. I'm sorry I have the Greatest Hits version. I know. It's not the cool one. It's not the one with the spelling errors on the back of it. This is probably the most common version of Final Fantasy VII you can come across. I don't care! I worshipped this game when I was in high school. I'll put that out there. I thought Final Fantasy VII was the greatest game of all time. It, it even says on here, Quite possibly the greatest game ever made, Game Fan Magazine. That is high praise. I have no idea who Game Fan Magazine is. <sighs> I was an emotional teenager at the time, and that's who this game appeals to. That's right. Downvote me. Downvote me. Hit the little thumbs down. Unsubscribe from my channel. The system in Final Fantasy VII is fine. Uh, it represents all the best parts of VI while continuing to try and innovate. The chocobo breeding was cool. The summons were very pretty. They made use of the PlayStation. It was the first 3D RPG. And this game, more than any other, I would think, brought gaming into the mainstream. Everyone knows who Cloud is. Everyone has played this game. Everyone knows what happened to Eris. I don't have to spoiler alert the fact that Sephiroth shoved his abnormally large sword through her chest. And at the time, that broke my heart. More than Palam and Purim turning themselves to stone to save you in Final Fantasy IV, which was the first time I ever cried at a video game. All the parts of this game that people love are ripoffs of other games. Uh, Eris getting killed by the villain was done years earlier on the Genesis in Fantasy Star 2. Amnesia Cloud, really? Amnesia is what soap operas go to. And he had such... He was so in love with Zack, I'm just going to say it, that he wanted to be him. He liked Zack so much, he wanted to be him. He wanted to cut off his skin and wear a Zack suit and date Zack's ex-girlfriend, Eris. 
and pretend to be a soldier. Cloud is a emotional wreck of a hero. I identified with being an emotional wreck when I was 16. I'm not 16 anymore. I went back and played this game again. It does not hold up like it did story-wise. The story has its head up its own ass. Sephiroth has a universal level Oedipus complex. It is so horrifyingly bad. His Oedipus complex, if you don't know what an Oedipus complex is, or you just kind of know it for the terminology, go brush up on your Greek mythology. I will wait. I'm not going to wait. I just... I'm having a hard time supporting Final Fantasy VII as a good thing anymore. It has created such a disturbing Final Fantasy fan community that I can't understand. The material system is good. The chocobo racing is fun. Tifa's hot. The music was good. One Winged Angel, I will admit, One Winged Angel is very catchy. But in the end, this is a story about a emotional teenager who needs to wash his hair, learn to use a real sword, who is doing battle with someone who loves his mommy to such an extreme extent, he is going to destroy the world. And it comes with it a obscene level of teen angst. Send me your hate. Moving on! Boom! Final Fantasy VIII. I hated this game for years. I could not get into it. I hated Squall. I hated Renoa. I hated everything. Everything. Everything about this game. Until I got into my rut where I was like, you know what? I'm going to play every Final Fantasy from beginning to end. And I played one from beginning to end, and two from beginning to end, and three from beginning to end, and four from beginning to end, and five. I got to the battle at the big bridge again and said, this game is terrible, moving on. And I played six to the very end, and I played seven to the very end, and I played eight. That's five fingers in addition to that, eight. I played eight, and I finally made it past the first disc, and that is where the game suddenly just opens up and becomes incredible. The scene has been set. You have finally <laughs> figured out the terrible draw system, and you've learned all the tricks. And you've figured out how to effectively play this game. And suddenly you have this whirlwind drama, romance, time travel, mystery, in a game. And you don't even realize that this great story is there until you get off the first disc. I hate giving this game a recommendation because I was a naysayer for years. And I hate telling people, well, if you get past the first eight hours, then it's a really good game. I hate doing that. But honestly, getting past that first disc was really worth it. I'm glad I played through Final Fantasy VIII. It's a good game. Just, it needed a better introduction to the game. It needed more clarification on the draw system. Um, but if you can stomach the first portion of the game, the first terrible portion of the game, the rest of it is amazing. Maybe the rest of Final Fantasy V is amazing. I don't know. I get so bored with it. Final Fantasy IX. Divisible by three. You already know what I'm going to say. I love this game. It is great. It's almost a sequel to the original because it's got the villain in it. The original Final Fantasy villain. The first boss in the entire Final F B -b 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 Fatal Fury series? No, Final Fantasy series. Garland. Garland is in this. I geeked out so hard. I, I fanboyed.
momentarily when Garland showed up in Final Fantasy IX. Good game, amazing cutscenes, great characters. Um, Zidane, wonderful. Steiner. Steiner is great. I don't care what you have to say about him. Steiner and Beatrix. Ah! Steiner and Beatrix. Heart. <laughs> Amaranth. Kind of the emotional moody guy, but he doesn't really talk enough to get annoying. Freya, great character. Vivi, great character. Even Quina had some strong points. In fact, the only characters in this game I did not like were Echo and Dagger. I hated Dagger. Dagger was terrible. Echo was kind of the annoying little sister type. I have two little sisters. They're great. Neither one of them were ever as annoying as Echo was. Um... Story, pretty okay. Villain, Kuja. <sighs> Kuja was a cross between Cloud and Sephiroth on his level of emotional destruction. Kuja, I both love him and hate him as a villain at the same time because he's like the penultimate emo kid. Uh, he got so depressed that he wanted to destroy the whole of reality. And that's impressive. Um, I love Nine. I don't really have many negative things to say about it, aside from uh, it. it is kind of grindy. It may be one of the most grindy Final Fantasies. And uh, it definitely requires you to pay attention throughout the entire game to the skills that you're building up because the final, final boss of the game will wipe the floor with you if you are not prepared. And your first time playing through the game, if you're rushing, like this guy here, he will destroy you. And then you will spend 10 hours going back and getting all the skills needed to beat him. So. I don't know, maybe I'm just bad at nine, but I did eventually beat it, and it's great. The ending cutscene is like 45 minutes long, so, you know, clear your calendar before you decide to finish the game. Good game. One of the best Final Fantasies, and I will say that earnestly. To the pile with you. Oh, my gosh. Here is such a pile, and that's... Primarily due to Final Fantasy XI, but we will get to that. Final Fantasy X. Ugh. I don't know if I've discussed it before. I probably have. I ramble a bit in my videos. I see we're at 30 minutes. I ramble a bit in my videos. Final Fantasy X was a very pretty game. First Final Fantasy to be like, we're doing voice acting the entire way. Ugh. Sometimes voice acting is good, other times voice acting is bad. Examples in good of voice acting, look at Catherine in Dragon Quest VIII. Examples in bad voice acting, look at Shining Force Neo and this turd, this guy on the front, Titus. I hate him. He's a terrible, terrible character. I thought my dad was hard on me growing up. Honestly, he just really cared how I turned out. He wanted to make sure that I grew up into a strong, honorable man who had lots of character and the strength of personality to do what needs to be done. And, you know, I'm a single dad with a career who makes time for hobbies and dating and friends. I think my dad did a pretty good job. He never beat me or anything. Neither did Jekt. I want to know what Titus has against his father, aside from him being kind of a hard dad and, oh, he disappeared from your life, but it wasn't because he ran out drinking or something, you know, rational that you can hate your father for. He left to save another world, and he didn't even have any choice in it. He was stolen. Your father was kidnapped, Titus, and you hated him for it? All he thought about was getting back to you, and that is presented the entire game. You keep finding traces of Jekt talking about how he wants to get back to his son, and he's trying to tell Titus that he loves him, 
and he's trying to explain himself as a father, and the entire time Titus is just like, I hate him. Titus is a terrible character. If Titus were a real human being, I would punch him in the mouth as often as I could. I would make a daily ritual out of punching Titus in the mouth. He is a terrible, terrible character. I do not like him. Waka is voiced by Joe DiMaggio, and that's really cool, but he did such a good job at making him annoying. Um... Kimari, I feel I could have liked Kimari's character more if I felt I had some direction to send his character on the sphere grid, but honestly, I just never knew when to use Kimari. Uh, Riku, again, we had kind of the obnoxious little sister type character. Um, she's cute, though. I'll give her that. Uh, Lulu. Guys, you know what I'm talking about. I don't need to say anything else on Lulu. Oron. Oron was a badass. Oron made this game playable for me. The voice acting was good. The character was well portrayed. He had a good backstory. He was there as not a father figure to Titus, but more of kind of like a guiding hand. He wasn't there for Titus. He was there for Jekt. He was there for Jekt to help Titus because Jekt cared about Titus. Oron, great character. Titus, ungrateful. Jekt. Jekt was great. It's a bad thing when you like the villain more than the main character at the end of the game. I got to Jekt at the end. I'm like, oh, it's Jekt. Hi, Jekt. And Titus is like, I hate you. I'm like, shut up, Titus. <laughs> Let's save your father. <laughs> Don't be so whiny. One of my least favorite Final Fantasies. I, I rank it a smidge higher than Final Fantasy V, and that's because the story continued to be interesting despite some of the terrible characters. Yuna, I did not like Yuna. I Not a Yuna fan. But the overall story was good, and the ending, the ending was beautiful. As much as I did not like Titus and Yuna, the ending really made it for me, and it almost let me forgive their characters in the entirety, because at that last moment, people who have played the game, you know exactly what I'm talking about, because you're reaching for the tissue box, just thinking about it. That is one of the greatest cutscenes in video game history, and unfortunately, it's stapled to a game that I 90% dislike. So, there's Final Fantasy X. Moving on. Final Fantasy X-2, or as we called it when I was working at Game Crazy, Pretty Princess Dress-Up RPG. Um, I really actually enjoyed this game. I felt that every aspect of the gameplay was superior to the clunky gameplay of Final Fantasy X. The combat was faster, smoother, I loved the class system. I really enjoyed actually playing this. Um, and I think that it's a mark of a good RPG if I don't mind actually doing the combat as I'm flitting about from story point to story point, because usually you play RPGs for the story, right? You don't play RPGs for the gameplay most of the time. This was an RPG I played for the gameplay. The gameplay in this is there. It is great. The voice acting, again, is freaking terrible. Who did they cast? Why did they cast them? Ah. Uh, yeah. Uh. Strangely enough, Riku went from being, you know, this irritating character in the first game, and I don't know if it's the costume, but I liked Riku in this one. Pain was cool because she was the voice of reason. She was really the only mature one in the group. Yuna's still terrible. I still hated Yuna in this. I did not like her. I continued to not like her. The gameplay was great. The leveling system was great. New Game Plus, finally. Why isn't this a common thing in RPGs anymore? Put New Game Plus in everything. Ever since Chrono Trigger was like, hey guys, you want to use your built-up characters from the last time so you can breeze through the story and get to things easier? Yes, put that in everything. Why is that not in everything? Put it in this. Oh, they did. Perfect. Put it in everything else. Please. My only problem with Final Fantasy X-2... 
Well, aside from the problems that are already stated, my main problem with Final Fantasy X-2, the main thing that kills the game for me, is that the ending of this game usurps the only good part about Final Fantasy X, the beautiful ending. This game ruins one of the greatest moments in video game history, which was the end to Final Fantasy X. It only happens if you get a perfect clear, which is largely believed to be the canonical version of it. There hasn't really been any Final Fantasy X media since then, so I'm going to have to just kind of go with it. I don't like it, because it just cheapens the entire experience of X, and it just ruins it, and get out of here, you. Final Fantasy XI. Didn't think I was going to cover this, did you? We also have... Chains of Promethea. Treasures of Ergen. Sorry, my hands are getting confused because my screen is mirrored, so I was kind of like... pretzeling. I'm voguing. Um, and... Wings of the Goddess. Okay, so apparently I put one of the games down and it hit the space bar, which is apparently the stop recording button. So I have 41 minutes of recorded video, and it will seem like nothing happened to you, but there is going to be a little blip. So anyhow, um, I was voguing at some point, talking about this mess of a game. Final Fantasy XI... I swear, they, stuck, they took the engine from EverQuest and then made it pretty. Final Fantasy XI is pretty EverQuest. That's not a good thing. I like Final Fantasy XI because it was my first true MMO. It was my first real experience being on a massively multiplayer game. You know, Diablo before that was instanced. Um, Ultima Online I never really got into. Not for lack of trying. I wanted to play it. We just you know, money, three kids. Uh, Final Fantasy XI... I have a hard time saying much good about it. It's a good-looking EverQuest clone. It is unreasonably slow-paced. I mean, you'll spend days in one area sometimes, just trying to get your level up. And when it comes time to buy new gear, you don't have the money for it. Uh, uh, unless you've been playing Final Fantasy XI for years now, there's not really any reason to play it. I don't have anything else to say about it. I got up to level 60, I killed the Shadow Lord, I got my Paladin Artifact gear. I didn't care about what was going on in the expansions, because quite frankly, I was tired of grinding. I was tired of being up until 4 o'clock in the morning, crossing my fingers to get into a decent enough party to take down more than four monsters at a time before the healer had to leave. Final Fantasy XI is an experience in everything that made MMOs terrible before World of Warcraft came along and made them soloable up to max level. That's all I've got to say about it. I know there have been changes. I know you can solo now in Final Fantasy XI. I don't really care because I haven't played it since then because I have no reason to. To the stack! Final Fantasy XII. I loved this game. It's another very political drama, much like a good portion of Final Fantasy VI was. And also like VI, none of the characters were really the main character. Um, it was kind of presented as like, you know, Vaughn or Ash was the main character when the game was first coming out, and anyone who started playing the game was like, oh, okay, this Vaughn kid is really annoying. But honestly, 
after the intro to the game and seeing just how big of a world it was and all the exploration there was to do and how fun the combat was, I stopped caring. None of the characters were particularly bad. Maybe Pinello, you could make an argue that she was kind of annoying. Um, Ash was a little bit broody. Fran was hot in a strange bunny girl eye heels kind of way. Uh, Balthier was a badass. Bosch? Bosch is a great, great character because out of all the characters in this game who had reasons to hate the villain, it was Bosch. And he put what needed to be done before his emotions, and he is a fine, fine example of what heroes in video games should be. Good voice acting. Phenomenal gameplay. Story kind of loses itself around the last quarter of the game, and you can tell that that is where um, the creator of Final Fantasy left. I can't remember his name. I want to say Kurichi Sugiyama, but that's Dragon Quest. I want to say Uematsu, but no, he's the composer for Final Fantasy. I can't think of his name. I'm so brain fried right now. This has turned out to be a much longer rant than I thought it was going to be. My throat's starting to go raw and I'm all out of rum. <clears throat> so I'll try and speed this up. Great game. Um, when Larsa shows up, the first time Larsa showed up, I was like, oh god. Oh no. We have a computer controlled NPC boy who is going to be with us for a while. Best AI-controlled character ever. He has an infinite supply of super potions, and he's not afraid to use them. Also, his character is not annoying. The voice acting is really good. He sounds young, yet intelligent. Larsa, you're going to be a fine leader someday. Keep up the good work. Uh, if... I had another complaint against Final Fantasy XII beyond this story just kind of derailing near the end. I liked the villain too much. I thought Vane was reasonable. What does that say about me? I mean, from his opening speech in the game, I'm like, I'd vote for that guy. I would do it. He was a good character. I, I honestly, like, when I got to the end of the game and you fight Vayne, I was like, I don't have any problems with you. Why are we doing this? Uh, so, yeah, if I had a major complaint against the game, it's just I didn't have any reason to fight the final boss. I just kind of felt like I was doing it for arbitrary reasons that two party members legitimately had. Ash had a reason. Bosch had a reason. Nobody else really had a reason. They were just kind of following along as the story drugged them there in the last quarter of the game. And it's such a shame that the original creator left. And then he went on to make Mistwalker Studios, and he made such RPG classics that you may know as Blue Dragon and Lost Odyssey, both of which are amazing games. You should play them. Brings us to Final Fantasy thirteen. I don't have thirteen two, so I'm not going to be talking about it. And thirteen three just had a video uncovered. I have not beaten this game. I played maybe six hours into it, and then I stopped. Not because I disliked the game, but because other games came out and I got distracted. Um, opening impressions very linear. Eh, eh. The combat is fast and interesting. I like that the combat is fast and interesting. Um, it does have the Final Fantasy X issue of where if you're not doing the combat in the way that it wants you to do the combat, you're probably going to lose. The leveling system is way better than X, though, so I give it a pass. Uh, Character-wise, Hope is kind of a little whiny bitch. I like snow, I like lightning. Vanilla is cute. Zaz is pretty cool. Anybody else? Oh, Fang, but she shows up later. I didn't actually get to her. 
it's on my to playlist. I don't really have anything against the game. Um, I know it was extremely linear. People have made jokes that the tutorial ends after the 20 hour mark. I was enjoying it up to that point. I just, I seriously got sidelined by other things. So you can't really take my opinion for 13 because I haven't spent any amount of time on it like I have with the previous games. I spent a good amount of time on 5. I am perfectly fine saying that I thought 5 was up until the Battle of 5 was fine up until the Battle at the Big Bridge and then the story derailed and it got really dry and I ran out of fucks to give. To the pile. Spin-offs. I guess we'll start with the first spin-off. Final Fantasy Tactics. I'm kind of a mixed bag on Final Fantasy Tactics. I didn't finish the game. Again, I just got distracted by other things. I enjoyed what I played of it. Um, my main issue with Final Fantasy Tactics is when people say, Oh, I love Final Fantasy Tactics. What a great game. And I'm like, Oh! You liked Final Fantasy Tactics? Did you like Ogre Battle? And it's not that they say, Oh, what's Ogre Battle? It's that when I explain to them, Oh, Ogre Battle is a very similar game, and it was actually made by the same people, they say, But it's not a Final Fantasy game. That's the part that pisses me off, because they're passing on a game that I know for a fact they will love because it is almost an identical style of game because it doesn't have a brand name on it. They don't know what Tactics... They don't know what Tactics Ogre is because it's not Final Fantasy, and therefore they don't care. That's what pisses me off. Final Fantasy Tactics fans, play this goddamn game. You will love it. I know you will, because it's made by the same people who did this. This uses the engine from this. This to a lesser extent. This is Ogre Battle for the Nintendo 64. It plays more like Ogre Battles... Or Nintendo 64. This is Ogre Battle for the Super Nintendo. It plays more like Ogre Battle 64, which, while related to the Tactics Ogre series, um, doesn't actually play anything like it, and they're good games. And I recommend that you try them, but, you know, grab the ROM first and check them out before investing any money in them. I know Ogre Battle 64 is on uh, WiiWare. If you do decide that, oh, like, oh, this game is pretty cool, but research Ogre Battle uh, 64 and Ogre Battle March of the Black Queen before playing them. They are amazing games. They just don't play anything like Final Fantasy Tactics or Tactics Ogre, which there's also a Game Boy Advance Tactics Ogre game. Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. Uh, this is actually my favorite of the Tactics titles. No particular reason. Uh, it's very fairy book-ish in the story presentation, and I don't know, maybe I like that more than the serious tone of the PlayStation games. I don't know, I just thought it was more fun, it was more enjoyable. I spent hours on Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. I haven't gotten around to A2 yet, so I can't be a judge of that. Uh, one more time. If you loved this, play this. If you loved this, play this. I won't say it again. I don't care if it doesn't say Final Fantasy on the cover. If you like one of these games, you're going to love the other one. Play it. Don't pass up a game just because it doesn't have a title that you want on it. Moving on. Oh, we're almost done. We're past the halfway point. These are weird ones to talk about. Oh, it's Crystal Chronicles. Where did you come from, Crystal Chronicles? Crystal Chronicles was designed with multiplayer in mind, and it shows to such an extent that it was designed with multiplayer in mind where everybody who was playing Crystal Chronicles had their own Game Boy Advance and their own Game Boy Advance link cable for the GameCube. 
getting four players set up on this was ridiculously challenging because you can have, you know, a set friend or a set amount of gamer friends, but usually you didn't all have the exact same set of systems. Usually you'd hang out, you'd share, you'd borrow, you'd be like, oh, I finished this game, do you want to borrow it? Yeah, sure, that sounds great. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles worked under the assumption that you had three friends with the exact same gaming setup to play with. And if you tried playing it solo, God help you, this game is hard. I said earlier Final Fantasy games aren't hard, and I honestly meant that. I'm just saying this game is more challenging than you want it to be trying to play solo. It's an action RPG, four players, it's a blast. It honestly is. Uh, trying to play it single player or even two player is just frustrating as all heck. <sighs> I'd give it a pass. I can't really think of any reason whatsoever to recommend this game. That brings me to the next game in my collection. I know there was another Crystal Chronicles game for like the Wii or something. I haven't picked it up because I got tired of the Crystal Chronicles name after Ring of Fates. I have glare from my monitor. Ring of Fates was not bad wasn't particularly amazing in any way either. It really just kind of removed the required multiplayer aspects and just left a very bland hack-and-slash game with a very bland story that, again, I didn't care to finish. I played the story mode for like seven hours, and I just never found any reason to care at all about any single character in this game. I've forgotten them. But what does that tell you about the game? I mean, I haven't played Final Fantasy IV in over a decade, and I still remember all the main characters. I tried playing this again like three years ago, and I did not care. Well, that's all the games. But there's more? Why, yes, there's more. I have strategy guides. It doesn't really have anything to do with my opinions on the games, but hey, I have some strategy guides, and a couple of them are actually pretty cool. So, stay there, into the pile, because I've been stacking stuff on them all night. Oh god, I fell out of my chair. Okay. Alright, I'm back. Um, I don't really know how to do this in any kind of order, so I guess I'll do them in order from most boring to least boring. Final Fantasy Origins Strategy Guide. Nothing particularly crazy about this game. It's another Brady Games strategy guide that was designed specifically to come out with the release of the game so that lazy people could use maps and such, or people who are doing Let's Plays and don't really feel like embarrassing themselves too particularly much. Here we have my Final Fantasy Anthology Strategy Guide, which is sadly falling apart because it's so freaking old and overused because of Final Fantasy VI. Not because of V. V doesn't need a strategy guide. I used it for six for some of the extra stuff, and um, the kid got a hold of it, so... Rips happen. The entire cover was just... Horn asunder, I believe the proper phrase is <gasps> Final Fantasy VII. I can't really think of any reason to own this guide. I'm pretty sure everybody has this entire game memorized to such an absurd degree this guide is not necessary. It has become genetic memory. My son is five and has never played Final Fantasy VII, and I'm sure he has it memorized. Moving on. I'm missing my Final Fantasy VIII guide. I lent it to my ex. She's trying to play through the game. Final Fantasy IX! Um... You can't see it right now, but I'm going to show you. 
See that? Enhanced by PlayOnline.com. This is one of the worst strategy guides ever released. It doesn't have maps, it doesn't have enemy data, it's barely a walkthrough. This thing would get flambéed on GameFAQs. This is a terrible, terrible waste of paper. Trees died so that this piece of shit could be printed. Play Online was their attempt... I, I guess you could say it was like an early DMR? Instead of passing the guide around, you had to create a Play Online account and input a code to say you had the guide so you could look at the damn maps. They're not in here. You had to go online to get the information. And this was back in the days of dial-up. It wasn't like you just had the internet on all the time. It wasn't like you had your phone on all the time. You had to take up the family phone and listen to the horrible noise while you connected and it was a terrible terrible idea and the fact that they decided to continue using play online for Final Fantasy 11 is something that has never ceased to just confuse the crap out of me Final Fantasy 10 guide why does this exist two reasons Riku's combinations the terrible terrible sphere grid enough said This beast, the Final Fantasy X-2 limited edition strategy phone book. Um, fold out, lots of... In There's a poster in here. <laughs> lots of information. As you can see, character art of the lovely ladies of Final Fantasy X-2, who never wear anything appropriate into battle. Um, there's also an art book in here. I don't know, it's limited edition. It's cool, shut up. Do you need it? Only if you're going for 100% and you feel like ruining the ending of 10. The piece du jour is this original Prima's Final Fantasy III Complete Final Fantasy III Forbidden Game Secrets Unauthorized, Unlicensed, Uncensored Underground and Unofficial. That's right, this was back when Primo was a black market video game secret dealer. The maps in here are actually really cool because they're like, they're hand drawn. Let me see if I can find you an example. I got this at a book sale at a library before I even owned the game. Okay. Here we've got um, the world map, hand drawn. You've got um, before and after the uh, the big event. Halfway through, the world gets destroyed. It's Final Fantasy VI. The spoiler alert warnings are over. Anyhow, this guide has been my best friend because there is an absurd amount of data in here, and it's ancient. It has packaging tape holding it together. It came like this. This guide has not really deteriorated since I got it. It came this heavily used. And for good reason. There's a lot in Final Fantasy VI. This is a really cool collector's item, um, if you ever happen to come across it. I haven't seen it ever show up on eBay, but I've seen other Final Fantasy game collectors who have it. That is the extent of my Final Fantasy collection, unless you want to count my son's stuffed Moogle, but he's asleep right now, and I dare not take it from him. Um, ran a bit long. I think we're looking at over an hour in total, despite my little faux pas and uh, recording the first half of the video prematurely. We are over an hour. Anyhow, um, I wanted to do a rant or lengthy video or something for saying Merry Christmas, ho, ho, ho. This is going up Christmas morning at 6 a.m. Um, and, you know, I hope everybody gets some great games to play this holiday, and I hope everybody gets to spend time with family or friends or whoever you have. If you are a loner and don't have anybody to spend time with, well, Merry Christmas or whatever. 
solstice oriented holiday you favor anyways uh enjoy some games have a pleasant day if you gotta work that sucks i worked on christmas for years i thought i was going to have to this year and i lucked out but um you know just try and make the most of your day try and make the most of every day happy seasons greetings yuletide stuff and again to anyone i offended you're offended get over it